Hello, welcome to Alyssa Jean's Reviews, and my name is Alyssa. Yes, I do actually remember what my name is, I think. Welcome to my review for Star Trek Strange New Worlds Season 2, Episode 4 of the... <laughs> what is that title calling it? Uh, the Lotus Eaters. I don't know. It's in the... You'll see it in the description. Something about the Lotus Eaters. I'm forgetting a the title uh but i don't feel like re-recording this so just look in the description and, and the title of this video i have it properly labeled there anyway uh full spoilers ahead obviously if you have not seen this episode yada 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 so let me uh get into it this was another fun one another really strong episode to start season two season two has been a very solid very strong season uh so far um has not been a clunker in the bunch. Uh, coming off of last week's really great time travel episode, we're going into something different. And that's what I love about Strange New Worlds is they do something different every week. And uh, we're revisiting Rigel 7, which uh, was a, pl a planet that uh, Pike had visited just before the episode The Cage, and it was causing him some trauma, and he was thinking about uh, leaving Starfleet. This was the Jeffrey Hunter Pike, even though it wasn't called Starfleet yet. Um, and so now we're following back up on that and i was wondering how they were going to do this i heard that the, this, they were doing that this season and um it was different than i was expecting but um it was a really interesting character piece for pike who has been largely absent this season uh the only episode in which he had more than like two minutes of screen time before this was episode three and he still kind of took the back or episode two rather the trial episode i had the right number uh episode two the trial episode um he kind of took a back seat uh, more so than i thought he would in that episode and then episodes one and three he is barely in this <laughs> so we get um a good character episode for him and we've moved past that uh thing with him worrying about you know what's going to happen and his fate because that was wrapped up in quality of mercy so we're able to explore different aspects of his character uh and in this case uh his relationship with captain patel uh and uh his feelings for her but also just uh, this pattern that he apparently has that Una points out that he just pushes people away uh very Picard-like in that way. Uh, so that was all interesting. We also get the best Eric, Erica Ortega's uh, episode that we've gotten so far. This better not be the Erica Ortega's episode, though. We promised an Erica Ortega-focused episode in season two. And this better not be it, because Pike is the main character in this episode. She has some uh, really moments to shine, great moments to shine in this episode. Uh, and definitely s stands out more than she has in any previous episode, but I would not call this an Erica Ortega's episode. This is a Pike episode, so we better be getting another one <laughs> that really just focuses on her. But I did really love her scenes. I, I love uh, how uh, she walks down the hall and goes, I'm Erica Ortega's, and I'm the pilot! Like, <laughs> And she kind of said something similar at the beginning in her uh, personal log i believe so it all kind of circled back around uh so i found the whole thing a really interesting it was a really fun episode not one of the greatest things of all time or anything like that but another solid episode uh to start the season uh now um i don't have as much time for reviews uh as i did uh the last couple weeks because i am uh back to going to work in the morning so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and, and spew out a few more thoughts uh and then i'll give my rating so let's uh, go ahead and get into some of the finer details of this episode okay actually before i get into uh, some of the details i just wanted to um address the fact that this is kind of 
uh, an amnesia episode in a way. And if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I hate amnesia episodes. But I don't hate this episode because it doesn't follow the formula of the type of amnesia episode that I hate. And the reason why I hate them because every single show that I watched as a kid, every single cartoon, every single sitcom, every single show, including Star Trek, the original series, all had an, an amnesia episode, and it was the same formula. One of our main characters hits their head or something silly, loses their memory, and then thinks they're somebody else and lives another life, and then at the end they realize who they really are, and and it's just such a redundant, repetitive, trite trope and like I remember growing up as a kid thinking that amnesia was actually a thing, like people could hit their heads and forget who they were and live another life for a while, and that's a thing that happened all the time, but it turns out it's only a thing that happens on TV. And I'm going to point out uh, the Paradise Syndrome from the original series as being an awful episode that I hate, hate, hate for many, many reasons. Uh, I believe I had it as number two in my least favorite <laughs> Star Trek the original series episode list, two or three, it's up there. Um, so I hate that. But this is different it's not just one character hitting their head and like forgetting who they are and living another life um this is multiple characters losing their memory it reminded me um more of the uh, next generation episode the conundrum um which didn't quite make my top 100 but it's one that i always kind of liked a little bit um but this one i might say is even a little better than that um where um Everyone on the crew loses their memories and they have to connect with something inside of themselves. Um, and Pike and Ortega are the two characters that we see do that the most. Um, but they all kind of do when Bango like, realizes he's a doctor. Um, Leon realizes she's a badass fighter <laughs> and those sorts of things. Um, but Ortega and Pike really stand out uh, in this episode. So I kind of want to touch on the... Uh, I guess romance between Pike and Captain Patel, a lot of people have been referring to her as like friends with benefit. Uh, seems like they're developing that a little bit more this season, even though, you know, she tried to get his first officer uh, um, kicked out of Starfleet and put in a prison. But she was, you know, she was following orders. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's all for Kevin. But I do like that they're exploring. Uh, Pike's romantic side, and uh, it is interesting that there's two captains trying to make a relationship work, which would be really, really challenging. Um, personally, I think they see each other way more often than what would really happen. Like, how often do two starship captains really get to see each other? Like, <laughs> I was like, I don't think that they would see each other even as often as they do. Um, but uh, what's fascinating about this is that Pike does the push away thing, as Una points out. Um, and when his memories are gone about, you know, why he didn't want to, to be with her, all of his, like, hang-ups are, are gone. Um, all he has left is the emotions and the feelings and realizes this is something worth pursuing. And I thought that the way that that story was told and how it helps Pike to uh, get back uh, to the palace and get his memories back was excellent. And I, I especially like the touch at the end um, where he points out to uh, Patel that this, this emblem, this thing that she, that she had given him, this pendant, um, she had said it helps lost sailors, uh, which was a nice little touch by the writers <laughs> putting that in there and goes, you were right, did help lost sailors. So I uh, liked how that all worked out. Um, now, with uh, Ortegas, she, you know, doesn't get to go down to the, to, into the uh, landing party, as they still call them, because this is original series era, uh, not away teams. <laughs> but uh, we get a little bit more insight uh, into her feelings about that. And we learned that she doesn't usually get to go to landing parties because she usually has to stay up on the ship and fly it because she's, I guess, the best pilot ever. Um, but we do see her uh, in, the, in the trailer that we still haven't seen that one where she's flying <laughs> uh, Pike and, and the shuttlecraft and, and freaking Pike out. And then the, she like swoops back up in the last second. So she's going to get 
to go down, you know, into a shuttle craft at least later in the season. Um, but we get some insight into that and in, into her um, her feelings about that. She's disappointed, but understands why the Enterprise um, needs her. But then she comes back around when she loses her memories, like all of that hang up about now again on the landing party is gone. She's now back to, I'm Erica Ortegas and I'm the pilot and really takes pride um, in what she does. Um, and is, of course is able to save them. Um, I also like uh, Spock in this episode and I appreciate that they did eventually uh, have him lose his memory too. I thought they were going to do this thing where Spock was just un inexplicably immune because he's a Vulcan and like... The I'm kind of over that trope. They use that with Data all the time because <laughs> Data's an android. It can't be affected by anything. Spock, often in the original series, uh, not always, but oftentimes he wouldn't be affected uh, right away. Um, so I'm glad they had him uh, affected too. And I kind of love how he just immediately <laughs> ignored number one's order. She was like, we've got it. We're staying here. Uh, and he immediately went to the bridge and ordered Ortegas to take them out. Um, but unfortunately, she wasn't able to get them out in time um, for him for, to lose uh, um, before they all lost their memories. Um, yeah, sorry, this is a very rambly <laughs> uh, review, uh, more so than uh, last week where I had some time to kind of organize my thoughts and put it all together. Uh, but I did want to uh, touch on um, the revisiting of Rigel 7 and how um, it turns out one of the three crew members that Pike thought was killed uh, that he was mourning about in the cage. He was really uh, kicking himself because uh, Spock had gotten really injured and three people had died. One of them survived um, and became this king. Uh, but then it turns out when Pike's really determined, he can just kick everybody's ass like, Hey, why didn't he just do that at the beginning of the episode? Like, he just tore through there and just destroyed everybody. Uh, maybe he just needed that proper motivation to, to save Leon and get his memories back. Um, because I feel like, why didn't he just do that at the beginning of the episode? But, he, but it makes sense. Um, yeah, and you see why, you know... Pike is the captain, and this dude was a yeoman because he's like uh, a sniveling little guy. They didn't really follow up with him at the end of the episode, but it sounds like Pike was going to take him back, and then Starfleet would decide what his fate would be. I imagine he would not be serving on a starship anymore after that, but I'm sure they'd probably, hopefully, didn't put the guy in prison or anything like that. I think they should just let him go on and live as a civilian. But, uh, anyways, I found that. All really fascinating too. Um, Want to say too, um, give a big shout out to Mabenga. Um, didn't stand out as much as Ortegas and Pike, but I think he had another strong episode uh, here as well. As uh, he was brought down there for his combat skills, which is interesting because it's just the actor who has the, the combat skills, so they're folding that into the character. Um, but it is his doctor skills, uh, his skills to heal, that really bring him back to himself. So uh, that was interesting, too. Okay, ramble, 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 ramble. Uh, I do need to wrap this thing up. Um so I'm going to go ahead and give my a rating out of 10. Um, I'm sure that if I were to think about this later, I would have more thoughts to add to this. Um, maybe I'll write a comment <laughs> in my own video, or maybe I'll write a comment in my brother's video uh, to add additional thoughts. Um, but I do need to get going to work, so I need to wrap this thing up. Uh, so let me give my rating out of 10. So each week, I give a rating and a 10 with one being the lowest possible score, 10 being the highest. Um, I am going to give us another eight. <laughs> so this is the third eight that I've given, episode one, two, and four. I've gotten eights for me. And episode three got a nine. Episode three is still my favorite episode of the season. Um, but 
I don't know. It's hard. I, I might have to go back and revisit and reassign numbers. Like I might have to give episode one a seven and change things because it's like episode one is like an 8.1 and, and this one is like an 8.2 and I would put episode two, the trial episode, like as an 8.3 or 8.4. <laughs> so, like just increments of eight. Like I, I would say um, this is my third favorite episode of the season, even though like three of them all have eights. <laughs> so it's, it's hard to, to kind of rate these. I might have to re-rate them later. But um, yeah, another solid episode. Uh, another strong episode of Strange New Worlds. We're going to have another great season so far. Uh, nothing below an eight for me yet. Um, really enjoyed this one. Uh, looking forward to getting that true Ortegas episode, hopefully fully by the end of the season uh but uh this was a good start i uh, love to see this character shine uh and love to get back to pike too since he has been largely absent this season so far anyways eight out of ten for me uh and that'll do it for my review this week please uh join me next week as i review season two episode five and uh Please subscribe if you have not already. Uh, if you're not following my Star Trek Top 100, please do. I am dropping my next installment of my Top 100 tomorrow. It will be numbers 50 through 26. It is an hour and 12 minute video, which is longer than what I usually prefer to do. But I put timestamps in so you can watch it in pieces. Um, but please check that out. My top 150 through 26 coming out tomorrow, and then I'll be back here next week to review episode five. All right, everybody. Have a good one. I will see you soon. Goodbye.